What's up guys, it's Paralyzer here, and welcome to today's video, where we're going to be doing a mutation tier list. Now, I know what you're thinking instantly, you're thinking, why have you already ranked them? You've just started the video. This is actually the ranking from the previous tier list that we did. So as you can see down here, we've got all the new mutations that were added. And now I'm going to remove all of the mutations that have been changed in the recent updates. Now that I've removed all the mutations that got edited in the most recent updates, since we last did this tier list anyway, I'm going to quickly go, go over the mutations that are still in the list and uh, see if I want to adjust any of the placements. Now in terms of the way we're going to rank these mutations, obviously they're ranked based off of how useful the mutation is, how easy it is to obtain the mutation, whether it requires you have to kill a boss or just eat some candy or something. And, you know, just basically how often I use it. Remember, these are my opinions on the mutations. So if you dislike them, then you can have your own opinions in the comments below. Just try to be nice about it, please. Obviously, at the top here, we have Fresh Defense and we have Natural Explorer. I'm actually going to move Ant Annihilator up to S tier as well. Now, the reason I'm putting Ant Annihilator into S tier is because even though it only works against ants, I still think it's one of the best in the game. It helps against Black, Red and Fire Ants and it does 25% extra damage, and you take 10% less damage. So for me, it's just an amazing mutation to have, especially when you're doing those two super mixers, and for that reason alone, it's got to go in the S tier. I also think I'm going to move Guard Dog from A tier into S tier as well. Now, the reason for this is that it increases your attack damage by 50% when it's at stage 3 during mixers, base defenses, and waft emitter raids. And that 50% extra damage is really, really good, and especially if you're doing the waft emitter raids at the end of the game, try and farm things like gold cards or resources, it's a very, very good mutation to have. So for that reason, it's going to have to go in S tier. Parry Master, I'm not really as much of a fan of anymore. It gives you 15 stamina per perfect block, and although I perfect block a lot, I usually don't find myself running out of stamina. So I'm actually going to move this one all the way down to C tier. I do think it's a good mutation, and it can be useful. But typically, if I'm trying to recover stamina, I don't use Parry Master. It's not my go-to choice. Next, we have Spicy Safety. Now, this mutation makes it so it reduces uh, stabbing and smashing attacks by 50% when you have this thing at stage 2, which is crazy good. 50% of damage reduced by attacks from um, spiders, do stabbing attacks, and the smashing attacks are usually from roly polies or black ox beetles or something of the like. You know what? I'm going to put it in S tier. I really like spicy safety. I think it's a heavily underrated mutation, and with the new addition of the infected broodmother, it's very, very good for those attacks because obviously it reduces stabbing damage by 50%. And also the wasps, I do believe, do stabbing damage as well. So the two new enemies in the game, this is effective against both of them, making this a must-have mutation in the game now. Tr Truffle Tussle. It's going down to C, okay? Truffle Tussle, fists used to be good. Fists are no longer good. Uh, Truffle Tussle can still be used, though, if you've run out of bombs to break rocks and other explosive requiring things, but it's a, it's a C tier. It's nowhere near what it used to be, and I wouldn't really recommend using it for combat anymore. Will Wizard! Now, they did change a bunch of weapon mutations a while ago, but I don't think Will Wizard got adjusted at all. Uh, what it does is it reduces... The Mint Staff reduces enemy movement speed by 30% for 5 seconds. The Sour Staff does 6 extra stun, and the Spicy Staff does 75 damage every 5 seconds with a burn effect. Uh, and when it gets to Phase 3... Staff attacks apply a buff that reduces stamina cost of staffs by 50%. I think this is a very good mutation if you use staves. In particular, if you use the spicy staff, which uh, I'm not really much of a staff user. So I don't know why I put this in A. I'm going to move it down to B, maybe. I don't really like the staves in the game. They're not my thing. It is what it is. Some people like them. Some people don't. Coupe de Gras can stay where it is. Um, Grassmaster and Rockcracker didn't change at all. I'm going to keep them where they are. Lil Fist's a D now. Don't bother with Lil Fist. It used to be good. Don't bother. They maxed the stack size at 100. If you take damage, it resets. It's rubbish now, man. There's no point. They ruined it. Reliable Friend, S tier. Now, last time I ranked this, I put it in B because I hadn't really used it much and I hadn't played much multiplayer. Right after that, I played quite a bit of multiplayer and... Um, yeah, it's basically the best mutation in multiplayer. You can revive people pretty much instantly if you have it at stage 3. So it's an S tier mutation. It's a must-must-have if you're playing multiplayer. Mertine, Stain, and B. Shocking Dismissal. 
I'm actually going to move it up to A. Very underrated mutation. It's very, very good for stunning enemies. I really, really like using it, actually. I've been using it a lot recently, and um, in particular, it's very good if you combine it with the Pinch Whacker, uh, which is the tier 3 thing that does electric damage as well, um, and it becomes a very good combination. Corporate Kickback, I'm going to move up to B. This one makes it so that you get Lifesteal. The reason this can be good is because it works against the Infected Broodmother uh, and cancels all of the debuffs that you get. I'm not a huge fan of using it too much, but in that specific situation, it can be very, very good for people struggling. And uh, yeah, the lifesteal can be good. If you run out of heals, you chuck it on and you hope that you get lucky and you get some lifesteal effects. Trapper Peeper can stay in C. Very hard mutation to get and it's mid when you do get it. Now let's move on to the mutations that have been changed since we last did this tier list. First, we have Javelinia. Now, this got a massive change. Now, when using it, spear attacks give you a buff that reflect 100% of the damage dealt to the player back at the attacker, which is useless if you're good at the game. But it still increases spear thrown damage by 30% and makes it so spear charged attacks deal 30% more damage. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not doing a charge attack with my spear. I'm either throwing it or I'm hitting with it. I don't do charged attacks very often in Grounded, they're not very rewarding. Also, the buff that reflects damage is useless. So basically, this mutation increases thrown spear attacks by 30%. It's a B tier mutation. The reason I'm putting it in B tier is that 30% extra damage is really good, but it doesn't have any additional effects like a lot of the other mutations do, and, um, you know, you have to throw the spear for it to be any good. Throwing spears is really effective, but I usually end up losing my spear half the time. Next, we have Smasher. This reduces your enemy's attack speed by 30% for 10 seconds, and when it's at phase 3, hammer attacks deal 50% more stun. D tier. You know why it's D tier? If you're using a hammer as a weapon, seek mental help, go to therapy, go outside and touch grass, not grounded grass. The hammers are useless, do not use a hammer. Hammer mutations are in D tier, and hammers are rubbish. Ever since they nerfed hammer speed, just before 1.0, I think it was in the Bug Strike back update, hammers have never been the same, and they are terrible weapons. Fact. Next we have Blade Master. Now I think last time I ranked this one in the C tier, but since it's had a massive overhaul. The effects now are, attacks from your blade will lower your enemy's attack damage by 30%, and sword attacks give you a buff that reduces exhaustion time by 90%. This is actually now an A tier mutation, uh, and the reason for this is, if you're using a sword, like a toenail scimitar, which is a really powerful weapon, and you run out of stamina, you virtually instantly recover all your stamina. It's really, really effective. Not to mention, reducing your enemy's attack damage can be pretty good, particularly against something like the Infected Broodmother. So for that reason, I think I'm going to put this in a solid A tier mutation. It's not perfect, but it is very, very good. You could argue that the reduced enemy attack damage um, is similar to the Javelinia Reflect damage, because it's not that useful if you're not getting hit. But I would still say that the uh, exhaustion recovery time is, is purely worth it for this. It's, it's an ATM mutation. It's very, very good. Next, we have Sharpshooter. Now, you all know my opinions on bows. I'm not a huge fan. This mutation makes it so that if you land a bow or crossbow attack, it reduces the stamina cost of sprinting by 100% for 5 seconds. So you can sprint without using any stamina. When you get it to phase 3, can the arrows gain special effects? Now, now I don't really care. Candy arrows are one-time uses. It only works on spicy, fresh, and sour arrows, none of which I ever use. The only ones I use are salty for the mantis or the wasp queen or wasps if I need them. So I never use candy arrows. Being able to sprint for no stamina for five seconds is pretty useless. D tier. Like, what does it matter if my sprint doesn't cost any stamina for five seconds? The stamina used to shoot the bow to get that effect is probably more stamina than it costs to sprint for five seconds, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. So it's useless. Buff lungs. Now, why, you're probably wondering, why is this mutation down here? It didn't get changed, did it? It actually did. They increased the stamina it gives you um, since the previous update. Uh, I'm pretty sure it got increased from like 30 or something, uh, and it now increases your stamina by 50. Uh, I'm going to put this in C. I don't think you need it. If you want to increase your stamina, use some milk molars. I don't think you need buff lungs for the extra stamina. You don't need a crazy amount of stamina in Grounded, and if you do, just recover it quicker, you know? There's a mutation later that's going to help you with that. Again, Meat Shield was buffed. It now increases your max health by 50. I'm actually going to put this in C tier as well. I don't think you need the 50 extra health. I think you get plenty of extra health 
if you're using things um, like milk molars to increase your health, and you don't really need any extra health other than that. You can use the smoothie, Fuzz on the Rocks, to increase your health as well, but I don't think you need Meat Shield for 50 extra health. Plus, if you're not getting one tapped, then just heal in between attacks. It's not really a big deal. Next, we have Mom Jeans. Now, this mutation was changed, as now, not only does it have a 10% chance to spawn a Spiderling upon attack, but it also increases your damage dealt with poison attacks by 50%. This mutation is now an A tier mutation. Summons in the game right now are really underrated. I think they're really strong. And this one in particular, increasing your poison damage by 50% is crazy good. Because it means you can do a lot of damage um, with poison builds. Although there are a lot of enemies that are resistant to poison at the moment. I still think that this mutation is very, very good. Particularly when combined with other summoning mutations and summoning trinkets. So for me, it's a solid A tier. Next, we have Mansteria Stranger. Now, this also did get changed. It now has a 2% chance to spawn the Mant to fight for you. Instead of uh, previously, I think it was a 1% chance. This Mant is pretty powerful, I can't lie. I'm going to put it in a B tier. Um, now, I think this is pretty cool. It's just a very rare spawn. And you do have to beat the Mant just to get the mutation. Which, the Mant isn't crazy hard to get, but it's, you know, middle of the game. I think it's decent. I don't think it's as good as Mom Jeans. And it has no other effects other than summoning the Mant. So, yeah, it's a B tier. It's all right. I like having the Mant around. He's pretty cool. Back to weapon mutations. And next up, we have Chopper. Now, this one makes it so that Axe Attacks lower the target's busting, chopping, and stabbing resistances by 20%. It also makes it so attacking with an Axe removes stamina regen delay as long as you're not exhausted. So if you're attacking with an Axe and then you stop, your stamina instantly starts regenerating up. Reducing enemies' defense by 20% is extremely good, and because you're using an axe and it reduces enemies' chopping resistances, it's basically reducing the defense by 20%, right? This is now an A tier mutation easily. Stuff like the Termite Axe is one, already one of the best weapons in the game, and by adding Chopper to it, you can reduce your enemy's defense even further, making it easily one of the most powerful weapons in the game. So for that reason, Chopper is an A tier mutation now. We might as well get the other two weapon mutations out of the way. Let's start with Barbarian. I'm going to put Barbarian in C tier. Now, what does Barbarian do? It makes it so that your club attacks do 25% extra damage for 10 seconds, but you can't perfect block. It also makes it so you regenerate 1 health per second. Now, why is this a C tier mutation? You can't perfect block. End of discussion. If you can't perfect blocking grounded, you're very, very vulnerable. Now, the reason it's only C and not D is because there are some clubs, like the Salt Morning Start and Pinch Whacker, which will allow you to block using a shield and not take any damage while using this. But any weapons that don't allow you that are two-handed, which is a majority of the clubs, are useless. And so for that reason, this is a C tier mutation. You're going to struggle to use this against any difficult enemy in the game because perfect blocking is a core fundamental of grounded. Finally, we have the Assassin Mutation. Now, this gives you a damage over time effect of bleed that deals 75 damage over 5 seconds. It also lowers enemies' resistance to bleed by 25%. This is an A tier as well. This mutation is insanely good now, but the reason this is so good is it not only does it do 75 bleed damage, it lowers enemy resistance to bleed, which is like a double whammy. So it's technically doing more than 75 because it's reducing their resistance by 25%. You're essentially doing 25% extra damage on top of that 75 damage, which is crazy high. It's almost 100 damage over the course of 5 seconds. And the best part about bleed is it procs every time. Not many enemies are resistant to bleed, and it's just really good. Next, we have Apex Predator. Now, this mutation hasn't necessarily changed. It just has new weapons now that also are affected by it. Last time I put this in S tier. I'm not going to put it in S tier anymore. I would say this is an A tier mutation now. Um, the reason for this is I think that the Venom is not as powerful in the new updates because Venom got a change where it doesn't affect as often now. Uh, and I think it does less overall damage. So I'm not as big of a fan of it anymore, to be honest. Um, it obviously works with the Scyther Blossoms really well and it works with the Bard's Bow as well to summon friendly wasps, which I don't think is great. But I still think it's like an A tier mutation. It's also really difficult to get. You have to kill the Mantis to get it, which can be a pain in the bottom. So I'm going to say it's an A tier. It's not quite that S tier mutation that I said it was last time, to be honest. Finally, when it comes to old mutations, we have Cardio Fan. Now, last time I think I put this in A tier maybe or B tier. 
Um, but what it does is it increases your stamina regen by 30% and decreases exhaustion time by 30%. The reason this was moved uh, off the list is because it actually got buffed and this is an S tier. I don't care what you say, okay? This mutation is amazing. If you're looking for any stamina mutation in the game out of Parrymaster, Buff Lungs, um, Cardio Fan and whatever else gives you stamina, this one is the best. Cardio fan is the best stamina mutation in the game. Fact. Okay? Doesn't matter what you say, it just is the best. You basically just recover stamina very often, very quickly. You don't exhaust as long. It's just a, br a brilliant mutation. Um, that's the reason I made a lot of the other stamina mutations low down, is because this is just the superior stamina mutation, and it's an S tier mutation for me. Now we have all of the new mutations that were added in uh, the recent updates of Grounded's 1.2 updates. First we have Bardic Inspiration. Now I haven't played much multiplayer and I do believe this only works in multiplayer, so it's kind of hard for me to rank this. But what it does is it gives all of your bow and crossbow attacks a 25% to play a Bardic Melody. This has a chance to apply a buff to nearby players for 10 seconds. There's three buffs it can apply. Attack Aria. Increases critical strike chance by 10%, critical concerto, increases damage of all attacks by 20%, obstinate overtune, reduces damage taken by 25%. Now these buffs are all insanely strong, they're very very good buffs, but only one can be active at a time, and there's another buff which can be activated if you have the Bard's Tudor equipped, which is 25% chance to heal 5 health for every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. So I guess over that, you're probably going to heal 5 health in 10 seconds, most likely. I'm going to put this in A tier. It sounds like a really good mutation. Now, I haven't had much of a chance to use it, so comment down below in the comments if you think it's an amazing mutation or if it's terrible. But if you have someone using the bow and um, you have this mutation, I think it's going to be really good by the sounds of it. The biggest downside is you have to kill the Wasp Queen to get it, and she's a pain. She is really annoying, but I think it's got to be an A tier. It sounds really, really good. The only downside to it is you can only have one of the buffs at a time. You can't stack them up, which would be really OP, so it makes sense. Next, we have... Do I need to say the name of this mutation? It's Dissection Expert, okay? It's an S tier mutation. It just is. It increases the drop chance of loot from creatures by 10%. You can't complain. This is one of the best mutations that they've added to the game. It makes it so you can loot so many new items in the game, which is really, really good. And um, you just get more, more loot. Like, how can you complain? You get more twinkling shells, which is amazing. You get more parts. You get more everything. The only downside is you do get it pretty late into the game. But if you're trying to farm stuff, it's just the best mutation there is. Next, we have Hauling Hero. Now, this increases your hauling strength by 15. Uh, for those who are builders... You probably love this mutation. I'm going to say this is also an S tier mutation, to be honest, because it increases your hauling strength by 15. There's no drawbacks. All you have to do is get level like four coziness to get it. It's really, really good. It's amazing for builders. It means you can have so much more carry weight and it's just fantastic. It's an S tier mutation. It's just a fact. Next, we have Rascal Rogue. This gives you a 10% chance to steal any piece of loot from a creature when you're hitting them. Um, it doesn't work with staffs or bows, but it works with any melee attack. Th this is an S tier mutation as well. There's so many S tier mutations now. I can't have this many in S tier. We have to relegate a mutation. I'm going to relegate Guard Dog down to A tier, okay? The reason Rascal Rogue is S tier is you can steal 10% chance to steal any item. How can you not love that? You get extra loot, you can get more twinkling shells, more of any of the other rare items you want. More loot, th the better. The more the merrier, as the saying goes. sour sensation they should call this sour seriously what the are you doing in this game this might be the worst mutation ever added to grounded it makes it so that when you take damage it reflects 25 percent of that damage back to the attacker 25 percent don't even bother with this mutation it is factually it is the worst mutation in the game i'd put it in f tier if i had an f tier finally we have spore lord now, to get this mutation, you have to kill the infected Broodmother. And it makes it so that um, doing explosive damage has a chance of giving you a bunch of different buffs. But the buffs leave you when you leave combat. D tier. Why? Why would you ever want to use this? I can understand, right? You're running an explosive build. Okay. 
Let's let's go down that route. Well, you can't use it against the infected broodmother because she's she heals from explosives. So that's out the window straight away. Okay. So we're going to use it against the mantis. Okay. 10% chance to give you a 1% resistance to explosive damage. Well, that's not going to help against the mantis at all. So that's useless. 3% chance to give a 1% increase to movement speed. Stacks exponentially if given multiple times. Okay, so I have a 3% chance. So I have to do 33 attacks on average to get this effect to proc once to run 1% to run 1 faster during the fight. And it ends as soon as the fight ends. 3% chance to get a passive regen that heals 0.5 HP every 3 seconds. Again, on average, 33 attacks just to get this to proc and it's going to heal me a little bit extra during the fight, which probably won't even counter the bleed effect you have it if you're fighting the Mantis. 1% chance to give a 1% increase to explosive damage. So on average, I'll have to do 100 attacks, and then my explosive damage gets increased by 1%. What's the point? You're going to increase your damage by maybe 1 or 2% over the fight. That's useless. It's pointless to have. I don't get it. I, I genuinely don't understand it at all. I don't understand this mutation. It seems and sounds so god-awful. I wouldn't bother with it. D tier mutation for that reason. That's my final tier list though. Um, please don't slander me too much in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinions of what you think is in the different tiers. What you think I've potentially gotten wrong. Particularly with that Bardic Inspiration mutation as I haven't used it much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like on it. And I'll see you in the next Grounded video. Have a great rest of your day.